and they are four and three over the previous seven. Second straight start for Justin Taylor. Looking for a little bit more production from number five. Just two points in his last five games and one of 11 from the floor. This is a guy early in the year. I mean, he had 25 in the game against Bryant, so you know that the scoring is there. This is Williams aggressively to the basket, right off the opening tip for the orange. Just carrying over from the pit game, and that was one on two. Very confident move. Start off the game for him. Career high 24 points against the Panthers on Saturday. He made five three pointers. His five three point makes also a career high for the sophomore, Benny Williams from Bowie, Maryland. I think you're going to see that zone extend out for Syracuse to try to cover threes. And uh, Kelly just took it a step further and knocks his first one down. Miles Kelly, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. 71 made threes this season. That's the best on the Georgia Tech roster. Now Josh Passner feels like they've done well against the zone. They've been able to score in the paint area, but with this smaller lineup, maybe a little bit more conducive to shooting the three. Franklin tabbed that one away as they tried to get it inside to Edwards. Well, we have a sec, Mike. Let's take a look at our Ford keys to the game, G-Man. Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, Georgia Tech, they want to try to score inside. Franklin has been on a, on a roll lately. For Syracuse, get to the free throw line. That's how they had success in game one, really outscoring the Yellow Jackets there. And that's what Edwards will do, backing down and making his way to the free throw line. Franklin picked up his first personal foul for Georgia Tech. And if you're Syracuse, that's exactly the guy you want to attack. Try to get uh, Edwards some touches. Get Franklin in some foul trouble. This, you know, Josh Passner with this lineup is only playing six guys. Maybe seven if they get in foul trouble. An 80-63 win for Syracuse at Georgia Tech on January 21st. They had a 17-0 run in the first half and shot 55% in that first game victory, Mike, against the Yellow Jackets. A lot of good bigs in the conference this year, Tom, and uh, certainly Jesse Edwards right there with that group. Shot blocker, rebounder. The key for him is to also stay out of foul trouble. Edwards averages 2.7 blocks per game, the best in the ACC. Coleman launches a three. Taylor pulled it down. See too many offensive rebounds out of this Georgia Tech team. Mintz with a double clutch in midair, and Franklin grabbed it. He got caught in between that time. I think he wanted to pass to Edwards, but they had him covered up in the lob. You just want to leave your feet with a purpose. Georgia Tech scored 83 points in its win against Louisville. That is Coleman knocking down the jumper. They're going to look for Franklin in the short corners in the back of that zone, and he made a nice kick out to Coleman. The 83 points against the Cards, the most in an ACC game this season for Georgia Tech. He also shot 48% in that win against Louisville. A season high in an ACC game as well as that rattles out for Mintz. Now that's not necessarily his game. I mean, he's, he's shooting at 30 percent, which is okay, but he's much better when he gets into the lane. Yeah, he's only made 17 threes so far this season. Yeah, if, if you're Georgia Tech, you're happy to see him settle for that shot. Look at Franklin just explode out of that corner and drive it to the basket. You know, I th he's listed at 6'7", Tom, and that, that may be generous <laughs> with Franklin. But like I said, he, he plays a lot bigger than that. That was a strong take. He's got incredible leaping ability. And a quick first step. He just put it on display, making the move past two Syracuse defenders. Mintz reloading for a three, Mike. Yeah, and second miss. Lance Terry, he hits, and that's a three. Coach Beheim wants a timeout. Syracuse timeout. The senior, Lance Terry, knocking it down right in front of Coach Beheim's bench, and there's a timeout on the court. Fort Mike and they've taken an early lead on the road a place where they have not won since 2019 yeah, perfect start almost for them four or five shooting two of three from behind the arc early on good start good rhythm good balance guys getting touches inside coach pastor took the Georgia Tech program to the ACC tournament championship back in 2021 defeating Florida State in the title game in Greensboro 
That's the destination this year as well after a stop in Brooklyn a season ago, and that will stay with the Orange. Final week of the regular season, Mike, and it's gone by so fast. There's still some things to be worked out yes. here, very much so. And, you know, not only in the uh, the bottom six, but in, in the middle as well, the top four. Well, good kick. Taylor we talked about two. wanting some production out of Taylor. Freshman from Charlottesville, Virginia, just took it strong to the rack. Yeah, the top four seeds really haven't been decided, although Pitt can determine its future at the tournament. The best that Georgia Tech can do would be 12th, and you would expect Mike the Orange to be playing in the 8-9 game on the second day of the ACC tournament. Yep, and uh, you know, and we see you talked about uh, Virginia Tech coming from that uh, Wednesday slot to win the championship last year. It has been done. Mince again, and this time he's on target. Well, uh, Georgia Tech is challenging him to take that shot. Quick shot at the other end from Coleman. Jesse Edwards grabbed the rebound. Well, they're only sending one guy to the offensive glass, maybe a half guy for Georgia Tech. Sturdivant grabs the loose ball on the run. Kelly sporting the pink shoes tonight. Coleman now for three. He's picked that same spot on the floor just off the left wing. Look at Mintz charging to the basket. Score the bucket, and he's going to the line. Judah Mintz. Follows on number zero, Lance Terry. So Judah Mintz hit a three-pointer and also drove to the basket. Got the foul on Sturdivant. When we come back, Mintz is at the free throw line for the Orange. State to complicate things as well on Saturday. Yeah, Clemson was very impressive on the road, and, and that coupled with NC State had been playing as well as anybody in the conference. Should be an exciting time in Greensboro, North Carolina next week. Judah Mintz standing at the free throw line for the Orange. By the way, the 29th time, Mike. But the ACC tournament will be contested in Greensboro. I know you are very fond of that city. That's the only site I ever knew for uh, the, the four tournaments that I was able to take part in. Uh, so very, very near and dear to my heart. One of the, my, my second favorite college uh, arena. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my second favorite too, Mike. Yeah, Greens <laughs> Greensboro special. Terry, that's a three. How about Lance Terry? Well, and uh, he did not play in the first game because of that hamstring injury, and uh, he's the one coming back from that. He has been fabulous. 12 points, shooting about just under 40% from three. Orange coming right back with Edwards. Well, and I think you know, if they go to him, when he gets touches inside, Franklin with that one foul is going to have to lay off a little bit defensively right now. Jesse Edwards averaging a double-double with 14 points, 10.1 rebounds per game, second in the conference, and Edwards was challenged by Franklin, who won that battle. He's not holding anything back, and that's what you have to do against a shot blocker is attack. Franklin going right at him. Gerard trying to get free for his shot, hits the rim, and Franklin elevates for the board. Terry again, no hesitation, too strong. Gerard, the spin, tough shot off the glass, and he calculated the angle. His degree of difficulty has been extraordinary on his offense, and, you know, I think really he's the guy that can beat you with a big game. Uh, you know, Mintz can go off, uh, Jesse Edwards can go off, but when Gerard, like, he had 28 in the first game against Georgia Tech, and they're going to just lock in on him, try to keep him quiet. That was his first bucket of the game, and now Terry again firing from the corner. You know, it, it took him some time to adjust from Gardner-Webb and to, to get used to play in the ACC, but since coming back from that uh, hamstring, it's been solid. 3 of 4 from three-point real estate and nine points for Lance Terry. Gerard, the catch and release, and he answers with a three of his own. You know, when you're right-handed and you swing into the shot that way, it, it, it's very rhythmical. Um, it's, it's tough to get yourself squared up the other way, but it's very natural coming the way he did. Sturdivant with a three. And it's raining inside the dome tonight, Mike. 
So far, nine of the 12 shots that the Georgia Tech has attempted have been from three. And they've made five of them. Mintz stumbles against Coleman. Franklin deflected it out of bounds, and that is orange basketball. Clarence Armstrong, John Gaffney, Brent Hampton are officials this evening inside the dome. Although Coach Pastor tried to make the call as well, the officials did not agree. And a teaching moment on the sideline with Benny Williams and the Hall of Famer, the Naismith Hall of Famer, Jim Beheim. We're playing on Jim Beheim court tonight, Mike. Yes, we are. And it, could it be named after anybody else? And why, just inside, Edwards is having his way. Seen a nice matchup early on with Franklin and Edwards going at each other. 47 years as the head coach. His whole life of the Orange program. Arrived as a player, class of 66. Freshman walk-on in 1962. Played in the NCAA tournament. An assistant coach. Team made it Dave Bain. Amazing. And another three, and this one for Georgia Tech comes from Miles Kelly. You know, you look at the, the opponents over the year against Syracuse, and, lot, you know, they force you to shoot that three with the zone. Edwards does not get the roll. Terry on the run, accelerating to the rim, fouled and score it. And that's the one thing Georgia Tech will do. They'll look to get up and down. They'll be opportunistic when they run. Terry doesn't knock down to three, but he gets a chance to make it the old-fashioned way. He's showing no ill effects of that injury. Very quick and nice job up the floor. Not too many times on the dribble. A couple passes and a layup. Soft bounce for Terry, who now has 12 points. Already in the first half, Mike, above his season average of 9.4 points per game for Lance Terry. The Gardner-Webb transfer. And pays for a couple of hundred point performances here early on. Gerard stop and start. Leaned into it, lost the handle. I think he was expecting some contact, Mike. It was a little bit off balance. Wow, that's the thing. What you have to do is you have to concentrate on the shot. If the contact comes, be ready for it, but go through that. Don't anticipate it. Sturdivant free throw line. And the Orange taking a timeout after the Sturdivant jumper. It's an 8-0 run for Georgia Tech. First, it's Terry hitting a three. And then Miles Kelly does the same. Yeah, Franklin in his last six ACC games, averaging a double-double with 15 points. 10 boards and shooting 61%. He and his Yellow Jacket teammates on defense. Driving and bouncing off on the chance by Brown into the game for the Orange. And uh, let me say, the, the free throw line was a big advantage for Syracuse in that game. It's starting to build into that right now. This will be the fourth and fifth attempts for the Orange here early in the game. 57% from the stripe on the season. For Malik Brown, the freshman from Culpeper, Virginia. Yeah, I think if you've got something to burn, uh, better to put him on the line than let him have a layup because of that percentage. Uh, he did not score in the game at Pitt on Saturday. He played six minutes. He's in the box score now with the free throw. Brown at Georgia Tech in late January had 18 points, a season high for the freshman. About to cross the 11 minute threshold of the first half. Coleman a few feet behind the line. Taylor high for the board trying to beat Franklin for it. It goes out of bounds and will stay with Georgia Tech. Taylor could not save it. Couldn't track it down. That was actually a very good defensive possession for Syracuse. They covered the three forced Coleman into a tough shot but uh, couldn't get the couldn't get the rebound. Despite that miss, Georgia Tech shooting 69% as a team. 11 of 16 so far from the floor. Syracuse not far behind at 57% field goal shooting in the first half. 
Well, both of these teams' defensive numbers are not outstanding. Right around the, uh, mi the uh, middle of the pack in the ACC. Wow. Three for three on three-point tries, Miles Kelly. You take three shots, score nine points. That's <laughs> efficiency. <laughs> yes, sir. Edwards lost the handle. Off the fingertips. Sturdivant runs it up. Ariel pass to Terry in the corner. Right back to Sturdivant. Williams, who just came in for Taylor, pulls in the board. Gerard able to keep it alive. Sturdivant a near steal. Williams, that's a three ball. <laughs> Benny Williams came into the game, converting on just 15 threes for the season. Knocking that one down for Williams. Kelly's shot was too strong. And that's, a, you know, again, Syracuse is having trouble. They're getting the miss early on, but this is the second time they couldn't come up with the rebound, and there was really nobody around for Georgia Tech. Coach Beheim, 1,014 career victories, second most behind Coach K. And about another 100-plus to that. Kelly front rim got fouled on the three-point attempt by Judah Mintz. Jim Beheim grimacing, you know, it's the last thing you want to do in that situation. Put somebody at the line. Especially a guy who's just under 90% from the line. Miles Kelly at the free throw line. Boy, th this lineup is impressive to me, Thomas. So, you know, I've seen him, you know, play on, on tape and on TV, but uh, Josh Pastner has taken this group a while, but he's settled on something good here. Yeah, this group, the starting lineup and limited substitutes have averaged 73 points per game over their last seven games. <laughs> they, and they, that's above their season average. And they have not substituted. <laughs> the game yet. I think there will be... A substitute yeah. some points. Yeah, and that may be it. Oh, we'll see. Gerard extending the range. Edwards had the rebound. The foul goes against the orange. Edwards for pushing off. It's the first on Edwards. So Simeir Torrance will come into the game for the orange. And uh, his minutes have really kind of dried up recently, averaging about eight minutes a game over his last seven. And I think that's just the, the expand or the play that Mintz has had, and uh, you know, plus Gerard playing well. You were talking about the starters, Mike, playing so many minutes for Georgia Tech recently. Lance Terry along that sideline, zero in old gold for Georgia Tech. He's played the full 40 minutes four times this season, and they've all been ACC wins yep. for the Yellow Jackets. So we'll see if he stays in there for the entirety of this game. Four inbounds pass. Mintz intercepts. Drives on Kelly. Got his own miss. Sturdivant in the neighborhood. And may have clipped Mintz on the way up for the first on Sturdivant. You know, where that ball was inbounded for Georgia Tech is not an easy place to play. And uh, they had the Syracuse did a nice job of getting the turnover. Seventy-four percent free throw shooter. Two to mint. And there's your one substitute. Jalen Moore comes in for Georgia Tech. Franklin goes out. Yeah, I think that more than anything, and Franklin did a nice job playing that stretch with that early one foul. Didn't get a second one. Now let's see. Uh, Josh Pastor's probably going to see how long he can uh, ride this lead. So Williams just came out for the orange. Copeland is in. 24 in white, blue, and orange. First time we've seen extended defense by Syracuse up the floor. 
loses a steal. Copeland does not have the numerical advantage. Lost the handle, then got fouled. Yeah, he got uh, really bailed out on that play. The fifth team foul by Georgia Tech, so not shooting free throws, but he was a little out of control. Second on Coleman. It's interesting, though, that uh, Georgia Tech didn't react well to that full court pressure. And I think that more than anything, if they don't get the steal, at least gets them out of, out of their rhythm in the half court. Edwards had to send it back out. Edwards turns and shoots halfway down and out. Again, especially with Franklin out of the game, a shot you want him taking. Third of it, really solid. Edwards at the other end with a rim bender for the Orange. What a great pass ahead, too, from half court. Inside of eight minutes to go in the first half. Sturdivant again with a turnaround, got a soft dome bounce for two more. And Kyle Sturdivant has been really solid in the middle part of that zone. You want to get a guy there who can pass and who can shoot the ball. He's had a couple of foul line jumpers. Georgia Tech is led by as many as 10 so far in this first half. This is Mintz in the paint front rim. He wanted a foul, didn't get it, Mike, and then Sturdivant turns it over with a travel. Passner upset with that. That's an unforced turnover. So there is a timeout on the court. 7.31 to go in the first half. Your look from right behind the backboard, and Edwards slams it home. Back inside the dome, Georgia Tech firing away from three-point distance. Yellow Jackets, 7 of 14. Miles Kelly has 11 points, Mike. Last four, 16 of 36 from three coming into this game. So seeing a big basket from there, just continuing here. He said, great looks, not a lot of pressure. He is the Georgia Tech leading scorer on the season, 13.4 points per game. Yeah, I thought looking at this and you know in Georgia Tech only four free throw attempts in the first half so far I thought they'd have to make north of 15 threes and uh, they're tracking right on that pace uh, at the moment. They only average about seven and a half made threes per game eighth in the conference. They are above that average or right on it roughly right now Copeland Edwards the catch and the finish. Yeah, in, in the pain area, he's had his way, uh, and they've done a nice job lobbing to him, running the floor exceptionally well, as he always does. Double figures for the 24th time this season, and Jesse the, Edwards. And, you know, the good thing, I mean, with Georgia Tech, I mean, they're converting on their threes, but they're not putting any pressure on Edwards, and he's not picking up fouls. Coleman. Shot clock down a two for Terry in trouble. Travel. Much better job defensively by Syracuse that time. Fifty-two percent from the floor for the Orange. Three of seven. That's the thing against, you know, when you have the shot clock, when it gets on your back against Syracuse, it's tough to do anything off the dribble getting into the, the lane. Gerard, Williams, and Mintz have made three-pointers for the orange. Shot clock goes inside a 10. Copeland. His three is off the mark late in the shot clock. One of eight on the year from three. Probably not the shot Syracuse. Had dialed up right there. So Copeland comes out. Quick discussion with Coach Behind. See how Georgia Tech deals with his pressure. Sturdivant, one man, fast break, got it right back. They are really <laughs> locked in on where Lance Terry is, and he's primarily been over in that left corner. That's where he's taken all of his shots from. 
Saimir Torrance picks up the foul for the Orange. The senior from right here in Syracuse, the transfer from Marquette. They got the three guards out there on the floor right now, and if uh, the, if there's going to be a guy to collect fouls, uh, then you know Torrance can use his full complement. Georgia Tech made 12 threes in its win against Louisville at home on Saturday. Franklin off the miss from Terry with the rim rocking follow for the Yellow Jackets. You know, and they got one guy going to the going on the offensive glass. Get a, get, nobody got a body on him. Everybody was watching the shot. Fabulous finish. Edwards. Trying to muscle it down against Franklin. Edwards skillful to the goal. Yep. You know, Franklin's still giving him latitude on those moves inside. Jesse Edwards at 58% from the floor on the season. Second best of the ACC. Kelly way behind the line. Coleman. Used to be a Coleman who wore an orange uniform who played in this building, Mike. That, uh, <laughs> that, yeah, not bad, number 44. Good defense from Georgia Tech. Produces a turnover. Just one of their last seven from three-point distance after starting six of ten on three-pointers. Well, you knew that number was going to come down a little bit. Trying to do a Colgate impression inside the dome. Kelly from the corner right in front of the coach. Gerard bumped going through the lane. He traveled. Yeah, Clarence Armstrong, there was a foul, but it was after he had shuffled his feet. Jim Beheim coaching in his 1,454th career game, Mike Jiminski. Amazing. He has seen a thing or two. National championship in 2003. That team will be honored this weekend and on Saturday. Franklin almost lost the handle. Kelly, watch out. He is ripping the ropes for Georgia Tech. And this is the third time out that Jim Beheim has called in the first half. Miles Kelly, 17 points, 5 of 7 from 3. How about Javon Franklin? Grabs it out of midair and slams it for the Jackets. The Orange. <laughs> Trying to get it done inside, Mike, for Edwards with 12 points to lead the way. And he's been very efficient, 5-7. and seven. Uh, We saw the run out dunk right there, but he's been playing around the rim for most of the first half. Needs some help. Minch has got eight points, but uh, and there you see the double-doubles. Only two rebounds so far in the game for Edwards, but uh, you've got to think he's going to be... He's already got the front half of that double-double taken care of. He is our fresh market. Discover the best. Jesse Edwards, the senior from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, out of IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. He and his teammates trailing with four minutes and change to go in the first half inside the dome. Second to last regular season game as Syracuse will host Wake on Saturday, and that's Mintz. I mean, <laughs> Syracuse shooting 54%, but they're down by 11 right now the offense okay just the three-point shooting for Georgia Tech has been off the charts Judah Mintz was six of nine shooting in the loss at Pitt had 16 points right on his season average shot clock is down to five tight on Kelly and poked away by Brown three seconds on the shot clock that Nothing. They got no probing inside that time. Everything around the perimeter, and uh, Syracuse able to lock in on each pass. Sturdivant needs to shoot it. Deflected by Edwards. 
Mintz. Got the defender in the air, and then plays it off the backboard. He worked Coleman all the way around himself before, and there was nobody between him and the basket. But that last defensive play was terrific by Edwards. He knew there was not a lot of time to gather, so he was able to go up on the catch and get a piece of that three-point attempt to start the break. Again, deep in the shot clock for Sturdivant. And he rocks that one home. I mean, there's there has been some ridiculous depth by some of the threes taken in this game and made by Georgia Tech. That's Taylor inside. Foul on the court. This is almost he's almost out by the S. I mean, that's a good six feet behind the three-point line. 27, 28 feet away. Easy. 22 feet, one and three-quarter inches is that line. It's a little bit closer in the corners. Of course, that's a harder shot. Not for Joe Girard, it isn't. A good pump fake, and, uh, you know, they, they need him to come alive, and Georgia Tech has been, kept him under control for most of the first half. Eight points for Gerard. Couple of made three-pointers. That's now 294 three-pointers made by Gerard in his career. Miles Kelly looking for another one. Comes up short. He's made five threes in two consecutive games now, despite that miss. Franklin giving a little bit of support on Gerard on that three. Pass right it inside to Edwards. Soft touch off the glass without fouling. Yeah, and, you know, for right now, I mean, it's a great take. He knows that Franklin doesn't want to pick up that second personal foul. Little 5-0 run by the Orange, Mike. Yeah, and still, you know, get a little bit of a run going in the half. Shot clock to seven. Third of it, dumped it low. Kelly Edwards is all over him, swats it away and recovers. Uh, Edwards made that play almost by himself. Brown trying to save it on the baseline. Terry put the shoulder into Mince and missed. We run it up and down the court with Mince, who gets fouled on the drive. End to end action. Orange. And Yellow Jackets, and Miles Kelly has his first personal foul. Terry a little upset he didn't get a, a whistle on the other end, but uh, smart play by Syracuse to run it right up their backs. Mince is three for three. Yeah, and 12 points, five assists for him. Really solid first half. Well, we have a second mic, a message from Coyote Tractor. My experience, if you work the land, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get go. The 7 0 orange run after the free throws by Mintz. Mintz, who leads the ACC in steals, almost two per game. Shot clock down again. Kelly inside Franklin for the slam. And he got fouled by Taylor. And that's just really good patience by Georgia Tech. They had the shot clock on their back, didn't force things. And uh, Franklin, for the most part, has been quiet, but uh, a terrific half for him, a chance to... Get to nine points, seven boards, has three assists as well. 17 assists on 19 made field goals for Georgia Tech, and that went off of the orange after the miss by Franklin at the line. Coleman on the inbounds. About five seconds between shot and game clock. Hey, 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 
out of 10 on the shot clock. 10 made threes in the first half, Georgia Tech. Sturdivant turns around, comes up short. There's Franklin! Right in front of the end of the shot clock. Gerard gave it to Mintz, who missed on the three in front of the game clock. And so Georgia Tech will take a 53-44 lead to the locker room after shooting 57% as a team and making 10 threes in the first broadcast position here at Jim Beheim Court. Inside the dome, Syracuse, New York, ACC basketball. So glad that you are with us. I was watching Georgia Tech warm up in the second half, and their perimeter guys, nobody stepped inside the three-point line for their, any of their practice shots. Let's see if they can keep that uh, torrid shooting going. After making 12 with a winning effort on Saturday against Louisville, first shot from Kelly is a long rebound miss. And it's, a, it's not an overwhelming stat, but Georgia Tech getting more second-chance opportunities than they should. Coleman. And that's where, you know, they've, they've got, when they've just settled to passing the ball in the perimeter, they have not gotten good looks, but when that ball goes in and out, got the inside touch, they got a much better look from three. Nine second chance points in the game for Georgia Tech. Here's a steal, Franklin, all the way to the basket and another slam. That was a first pass to the fast break. You get that uh, pass, a turnover going back out to half court. And a guy who runs is, and you got Edwards who's pretty quick in his own right, but he's not going to chase Franklin down. First five points of the second half belong to the Yellow Jackets. Miss from Gerard. He's trying to get going. He had a relatively quiet first half. I think it's really the size of, uh, you know, Georgia Tech's guards that bothered him a little bit. They've had a little taller cover on him. Eight points in the first half for the Orange leading scorer, Joe Gerard. Kelly lost the handle in the corner. It will stay with the Yellow Jackets. 11 made threes in the game. Georgia Tech. Shot clock at five for Franklin. Sends it out to Terry. He hits another three. And I tell you what, Franklin has been fabulous in this game. His fourth assist has been kind of lurking in those short corners. And Jim Beheim, another timeout. And since the first half at the end of that half, a 12 0 run. Which is of our second half, 61 44. Here's our Coyote tractor turning point. 8-0 run to start the half and uh, started right, you know, picked up right where they left off. Three of four, two of three from behind the arc. Here, here's, a, here's the thing to look at it too, Tom. I mean, you're at Georgia Tech right now, shooting 59% from the floor. All right, they, they've missed 16 shots. They've got seven offensive rebounds for 12 points. That's just too much to overcome. Edwards. Trying to get away from Franklin. He can be a little bit more aggressive right now in this half, and he had a terrific one-on-one -on -one defensive play there in the post. Basketball coming our way. Right to G-Man. He was ready to shoot. I'm always ready to you shoot, brother. See. <laughs> Once you pass it inside to G-Man, don't expect it to come back. Yeah, they called me the black <laughs> hole for a reason. The All-American from Duke. Light disappeared in the post when it <laughs> went in there. <laughs> That's why they call it a black hole. Yeah. Gravity so strong, not even light can escape. But I digress. Shot clock at seven. Kelly. They're just flipping that ball around to Terry, and that's a three in front of his own bench. I mean, their, their execution offensively has been flawless in this game. Six of their last nine from three, and Edwards drops the hammer at the other end for the Orange. Yeah, but right now they're playing two for three. And this is, uh, you know, Syracuse has to get some stops. You know, in that game at Pitt on Saturday, Syracuse watched the Panthers launch 41 three attempts and make 16 of them. Foul on Edwards on the push. And it's been a similar view 
Well, and you know, the thing, you know, against this zone, you want to be front running. You want to be shooting with especially the three. And it, all it does is spaces everybody out. Get that extra pass or court cross court pass, get good looks. Terry leads the way with 18 points. Double team on Franklin and a foul is called. Edwards and Copeland in the neighborhood. That'll be the first on Quadir Copeland, the freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, we saw an outburst like this early in the year by Colgate. Oh, 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 made plays. Edwards recovered defensively as Franklin was going in for the dunk. What a pass! Williams from Mintz, wow, and he was met in midair. Franklin returning the favor on the other end. Sturdivant right into Copeland, whistle and foul. You know, you, you look at a guy, I, talk, I compare him with Omir. You undersized, but, but a bigger body, and you say, all right, I get the dominant thing, but you look at Franklin, man, he just, he, almost like Bill Russell. This is the way he gets up and the way he surprises you with his shot blocking ability. Time for CPI security, Mike, protecting the paint. We'll get to that in a sec with Sturdivant at the free throw line. You mentioned Franklin, 6'7", 214. You mentioned Omir, 6'8". Yeah, 240. Yeah, at least. Yeah. DJ, throw DJ Burns in the mix yeah. from North Carolina State. And, and I, you know, I think it took those guys coming from mid-major programs a little, little while to adjust to the size. Copeland recovers and misses. Inside Franklin, right back out to Terry. And he hits another three. And he's all smiles up the court and a high five from Kelly. And uh, we may be witnessing a triple double here by Franklin. Eight rebounds, six assists for him. Plenty of time left in this game. Franklin lost it out of bounds. So it's been all Georgia Tech at the start of our second half. Javon Franklin and his teammates extending the lead here in the second. It's in Franklin, and uh, they have been stepping up. Four blocks in the game for Jesse Edwards. Leads the conference in blocks per game, but right now it is the orange. Edwards and his teammates in a sizable hole, Mike, here in the second half against visiting Georgia Tech. Yeah, and I like the fact, too, Franklin is he's much more aggressive defensively, has two fouls. He picks up that third. Uh, things could change a little bit. Gerard, quick shot. Yeah, it's just uh, offensively, Syracuse really out of sync in this half, one of seven now. But it's just the quality of shot that they're getting is not good. And this is after both teams, Mike, in the first half shot 57%. Edwards produces a steal. Yeah, nice job overplaying Franklin out front. Williams lays it in. Could that be a turning point for the Orange? Yeah, and now, you know, we talked about uh, Jesse Edwards as a shot blocker, but showing his ability to get out on the floor and play some, uh, some defense as well. 35 steals on the year. Looks like the Orange, Mike. Moving to a man-to-man -man defense, and that does not stop Miles Kelly, who went by the bigger Edwards. Yeah, and well, you know what? You drove him off the three-point line, but uh, that length able to get in and finish. Copeland in a congested area. Looking for assistance. Got it from Mintz. He was tripped on the way up. And it appears that Mintz will go to the free-throw line. Elevating to the rim. Good to see him up and walking. Just caught a foot right there with Kelly. And let's see uh, you know, if he converts on both of these free throws as Syracuse pushes up and uh, applies a little full, full court pressure. Vince is five for five from the stripe of the game. Every point so valuable at the orange. 
attempt to make a comeback in this one as Mintz converts on the second free throw. Georgia Tech with a nine point halftime lead. And the three pointer has been their chosen weapon tonight. 14 made threes on 27 tries for Georgia Tech. That is twice as many made threes, Mike, as they average per game. Coleman. Shot clock down to three. Gerard runs it up for the orange after the miss. Well, and I think Josh Pastner knew they had to shoot it. That sort of uh, clip to, to have a chance in this game. Mitts too strong. Log rebound to Terry. Again, I'll say Georgia Tech will take that shot from Mitts. about the only thing that Mintz does not do at a very high level, just 30% on the season from three-point real estate. That bounces out for Coleman. All of a sudden, the rims are unkind to both teams. A bit of a drought here for uh, Georgia Tech. Gerard on a foul. Terry fouled him. Second on Lance Terry to his disbelief. Here's the look again, you know, don't block the shot and just get a hand up in that situation. You know, the more, as we look at the last 13-35 here, that Syracuse can score without the clock running is going to be to their benefit. First trip to the line tonight for Joe Girard. 85% from the line. Best on the Syracuse roster and fourth in the ACC. You know, it truly is amazing, too, with, with Tech. Only six guys have still played, and, and really more only a few minutes didn't score. It's been the starting five for the whole game. Same lineup for eight straight games, starting for Josh Pastor. I mean, nobody complaining about minutes. Joe Girard, the senior from Glens Falls, New York. Crowd trying to get behind their team, especially in the defensive end of the floor, to get a stop. Torrance. So you know things change when uh, Syracuse goes man to man. Kelly down the lane. His pass goes out of oh. bounds. And probably nobody shocked more than Georgia Tech playing <laughs> against this team. They've had a couple of turnovers now against this uh, man. That's seven turnovers for the game for the Yellow Jackets. Torrance. Williams! That was a two, Mike. Yeah, let's see. Uh, well, Josh Pastor is still a 19-point or still a 17-point game. How long he goes before he uses a timeout? Gonna let his team play through it on this possession. Yellow Jackets seeking their first ACC road win of the season. We've had some close calls. Sturdivant put a little backspin on that one. Soft bounce on the heel and it drops. Boy, I tell you what, though, the offense really runs well and great. Right after a made basket, Mintz just converted in about five seconds. You've got to find him and stop the, the drive up the floor. 17 points for Judah Mintz. Leading freshman scorer in the ACC is Kelly misfires. And now four of eight from three-point distance. Second half for Georgia Tech. Gerard on Terry. Put the shoulder into him. I don't know if that's necessarily Joe Gerard's strength right there. Georgia Tech went six of ten on threes to start the game. Then just one of seven. Now seven of their last ten. You know, and this is what whenever a stop at your play and there's an under 12 coming up, Georgia Tech is gonna have to talk about playing against this man. Franklin from Sturdivant. And there's the guy you go to. Seven of eight. 14 points for him. Nine rebounds, seven assists. And 
No, we didn't know. Four players in double digits for Georgia Tech after the Torrance miss. Led by Lance Terry with 21 points. Terry around the edge over Edwards. Franklin's in there. Kept it alive for Kelly. That's a three from Miles Kelly. And here's what happened. Edwards is going to go for the block. Franklin just followed right in behind him to get the offensive rebound. That was Torrance on the move. Offensive foul against the Orange. There is a timeout on the court. Miles Kelly, the leading scorer in the game for Georgia Tech. He's got 22 and 6 made for our Z-Max. Max performance and putting on a show in a jacket uniform tonight. Yeah, I mean, 18 and a half or 17 and a half points in his last four. He's uh, moving that number up. And just as soon as you've seen a big, big basket all game long, especially from, from deep. Six of his seven made field goals from three. Probably should have expected this from Miles Kelly. His four games prior to tonight, he was averaging 17 points per game and shooting 48% from the floor. And he has backed it up with a 22 point performance. And that number leads everybody tonight. His teammate Lance Terry has 21 points, and he is our max performance, sponsored by Z Max, Miles Kelly. And really balanced scoring, too. Debo Coleman is the only one struggling out from the floor, one of eight from three, but uh, everybody else having a terrific night. And uh, Syracuse staying in that man to man. Let's see after that timeout if uh, Georgia Tech executes a little bit better. Coleman into traffic, coughed it up. Torrance had it poked away by Terry. Sturdivant couldn't save it. This is Mintz. Uh, the last thing you do is save it under the other team's basket. Just take the turnover right there and set your defense. Giveaway two. 20-point game. The largest lead for Georgia Tech, 23 points here in the second half after leading by nine at halftime. Franklin touches the ball and the offense runs through him. Good things happen. Let's see if he can bail him out at the end of the clock. One second on the clock. Franklin got it away. Edwards defended it well. Closest call this season for Georgia Tech on the road was at Wake Forest mid-February. Really nice man defense inside. Getting the steal, moving your body, readjusting. Jackets lost by a point on the road at Wake, 71-70. This is Coleman for three. Front rim and Edwards. Foul at the other end. Remember, Georgia Tech has won three of its last four, Mike. Four of its last six. Four and three in their last seven games, and they completed the home schedule with four straight wins. Playing some of their best basketball of the season. Torrance inside from Edwards. Good find by the centers are uh, passing the ball well in this game. Good find. One thing to keep in mind, too, Syracuse does not have a timeout left in this game, Tom. 8.45 left. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to shake the guy's hand and go down the other end of the floor. That is a new career high for threes made in a game for Miles Kelly. Gerard can't find the range from three-point distance. Behind the back dribble from Sturdivant. Then he goes old school with the runner. Well, and Edward was, was caught in between. There was nobody there to, to guard Sturdivant. And the lead is back up to 23. Folks inside the dome stunned. Edwards still fighting. He's got two. Georgia Tech has not won inside the dome since January of 2019. 
defeating the Orange 73 59. And really, the only three point threat that Syracuse has out there is Gerard, and they've locked in on him. So they'll, uh, they'll play two point basketball with Edwards inside. Right on line for Kelly, and somehow that bounced out. <laughs> Mince. Good job not fouling Mince in that situation and bailing him out. Kelly with a miss in tight. Ball back to the orange. Both teams still shooting over 50% for the game. They both shot 57% in the first 20 minutes. Orange four and four against ACC opponents this season on their home court. Out of the double to Torrance. Edwards standing around by Syracuse no ball movement no player movement Just look at the body language of the Georgia yeah. Tech players and they are just playing with supreme confidence Well, and uh, they're starting now with this man to use the clock a little bit too Being a little patient in each possession Terry Twisting his body awkwardly, he got it back for a three. He shoots that low liner three, Mike, and it's money for Terry. 17 made threes in the game, and still time to go. Terry now has seven made threes. That's a career high for him. Sturdivant on the turnover. One on one with Mintz with the bump. Georgia Tech maintaining its lead as Mintz picks up his second personal foul. Lance Terry and his teammates all over the orange. Stay tuned for the fast break presented by your local Ford dealer. Prior to the start of that season, finished 30 and five and a national title. Well, you know, the prognosticators have gotten some things wrong. And, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know that anybody thought about Carmelo Anthony as a freshman, you know, having that type of year. So we'll, get, we'll, we'll let him off the hook a little bit, but just a dominant performance. He had 20 points in the title game. Jerry McNamara made six threes at 18 points. And the Orange brought home the championship. It was a much brighter outlook than tonight Mike it's been a struggle most of the evening for the orange really kind of a shocking you know I, I, we, knew, we knew that Georgia Tech was better um, but this type of output especially in the way they did it shooting the, the way they did from behind three Franklin with a double double as well he's closing in on potentially a triple double they haven't had one of those since 2011 at Georgia Tech Not, and you know that for Syracuse the switch to man-to-man -man. something drastic had to happen and uh, even that has not slowed Georgia Tech down So both of these teams with one more game this week Coming up on Saturday And then they'll head to the ACC tournament in Greensboro, North Carolina. This is Coleman for three well, The 17 threes the most under Josh Pastor for Georgia Tech Mintz was driving and got hit. Georgia Tech is at Boston College, Mike. Coming up Saturday. Second foul on Sturdivant. Checking on Franklin. He just needs two assists, right? 14 yeah, points yeah. and 13 rebounds. And, and he's, he's actually had the pass that a couple of shots have missed that were wide open looks, too got two blocks two steals to go along with that potential triple double five double doubles in his last six games eight on the season for Javon Franklin we featured him at the top of the broadcast and for good reason well you know and the thing is too that you know a lot of times you'll see stats front end loaded against a, maybe a weaker non-conference schedule but he's done his best work in conference by a, you know by yeah. a lot leading rebounder for Georgia Tech this is off of 21 points to lead the team and 13 rebounds against Louisville in the home win on Saturday 
Averaging a double-double for his last seven ACC games, as Mike mentioned. So strong in conference for number four in old gold and blue. Looking for the assist, and he got it. He got it to Miles Kelly. And that's going to put him, Mike. Nine. One assist away from a triple-double. And I'll guarantee you, everybody out on the floor knows where he's at, number one. And this is... The offense has been terrific when he's when it's run through him and he's been making decisions. There have only been four triple doubles all time for Georgia Tech. The last one was 2011. That was Iman Shumpert against Virginia Tech at home. So we're keeping an eye on that potential triple double for Javon Franklin. Now he's played basketball in many locations. Coach Bayheim has to watch his team kind of trudge through these last few minutes. Franklin's a transfer from Auburn and South Alabama. First year in the Georgia Tech program. He'll allow that bucket from Brown. There have been some uh, portal guys who have made a difference. B.J. Burns has been terrific for NC State. Out of Winthrop University in the Big South. Yeah. Appleby at the uh, back-to-back -back portal, guys. Norchad O'Meara and O'Meara. Nigel Pack. Yep. For Miami. A team that could still be tops of the ACC. Quentin Post for BC. And Bebo Coleman, who has had an off night. The only Yellow Jacket who can say that. Second three for Coleman. Start of it. Terry tried to jam it. Torrance went up, tried to meet him. We'll sort this out when we come back. It was Terry hanging on the rim. And we'll take a look at it when we come back with Coach Pastor's team way in front on Saturday. Lance Terry. One of the potent scorers in that Georgia Tech lineup. Terry in the game with 24 points trails only Miles Kelly with 28 for the team lead. Yeah, and 8 of 13 is good from the field, but when you're 7 of 10 from 3, you know, take 10 shots there and score 21 points. That is, uh, you know, that, that is just huge. And then, you know, we talk about, you know, 94 points. It, the team makes 18 of 37 threes against you. That's a lot to overcome for any defense. That was our Worth the Watch presented by Principal Financial. If you're a Syracuse fan, you might want to turn away. If you're Georgia Tech, they've made 18 threes, Mike. Yeah. That is a school record. Because the 17 threes was tied with the single game record from back in 2001 against Clemson and then Coleman made another three. It's a new school record tonight for Georgia Tech a made threes in a single game. Amazing. Simply an amazing performance on the road. A late rim rocker for the orange. Not going to be nearly enough tonight. They trailed by just nine at halftime. Georgia Tech came flying out of the locker room. Kelly again. Franklin. Franklin is one assist away from the first triple double since 2011. Shot clock at three. Coleman. Franklin got it. Second offensive rebound in a row. I thought maybe Terry would shoot that because he got the pass from Franklin. Yeah, I think you know, while well, just Josh Pastner put up the, uh, the third base coach the stop put up sign. The stop sign. I, I would watch the third base coach. He's not waving you in. Yeah, just you gotta, sometimes you got to run through that. <laughs> no laughing matter for the Orange Mike. They have to regroup quickly at home. They play Saturday against Wake, and they certainly need to make a run at the tournament to have any shot. Of postseason hopes. I mean, realistically winning. Gonna have to win it. Yeah. Gonna have to win it. Number 14, Last year they made the quarterfinals. 
Also made the quarters in 2021. Losing to Virginia in Greensboro. I think, you know, now, and I know that, you know, the coaches, they're not surprised by you know, anything, certainly, but, you know, facing this Georgia Tech team a little bit different than it was in January. And you can say the same thing about Boston College. Absolutely. BC's on the road tonight against Wake Forest, and they've got the lead late in that one. There's the shot. There it is. Triple double. And the bench knew it, too. Kelly hit the jumper. Franklin's got assist number 10. They haven't credited it yet, but that's the that was definitely him who threw the ball out. Well, our official score readout still says nine assists for Javon Franklin. And they're taking him so, out of the ball game, too. So, Mike, we've got a running play-by-play -play on our monitors, and the assist has been credited to Lance Terry. So not Franklin. Follow Bucket Brown. So Franklin out of the game with 14 points, 15 rebounds, and right now the nine assists. Yep. Because uh, I, I, I looked like it looked like he just he tossed it out to him and he made the shot. I'm almost positive it was him or you know that should have gotten the assist. Maybe we'll get a look at it. It was again credited to Lance Terry according to our readout. So there's Franklin. There it is. And just the, he the gives it off, off to Kelly. I mean, that's that's an easy. That's going to be corrected. That'll be corrected. I mean, there's visual evidence right there. There's no doubt that it was Franklin with the handoff to. Miles Kelly for the jumper. So even though officially right now he's given nine assists and now Terry's coming out of the game as well Lance Terry with 24 points by the way Miles Kelly 30 points Mike yeah, you got you've got two 20 point scores and a 30 point score in this five guys basically have scored for Georgia Tech those 30 points easily the best scoring performance by a Georgia Tech player this season in fact Miles Kelly had it at 24. He was tied with Lance Terry. They both had scored 24 in a game prior to tonight, but it's 30 by Miles Kelly. Georgia Tech has made some substitutes now, Mike. Yeah, no, it, but just, a, just an incredible performance. 35.9 seconds to go, and the Georgia Tech side of the box score is eye-popping. As Mike just said, two 20-point scores, a 30-point scorer, and a guy with a triple-double. 18 made threes, school record, and what we think is going to be a triple-double. Again, officially, it has not been changed, but well, we just showed and, you the video evidence. And how about Devo Coleman didn't shoot the ball well, but he had eight assists. 18 threes on 39 tries. That is 46%, Mike Jaminski. Yeah, and 27 assists on 35 made field goals. I mean, if Coach Pastor could bottle this effort up, he would. And he could sell it for a pretty penny. And nine, only nine turnovers. Well done, Georgia Tech. Hard to find any deficiencies in their first ACC road victory of the season for Georgia Tech. It took a little while. But it was worth the wait. And they're going to improve to 13 and 17 as they try for another three. That one from Coleman Boyd. He was one of the seniors who was honored prior to the game on Saturday. Nico Ruffin with the layup. And the final seconds will tick off the clock. How about this win by the Yellow Jackets, Mike? 96. 76 is the final, their first win inside the dome.
since 2019 yep. and coach Pastor's team came to play tonight especially from beyond the arc. Well and it was you know it was really right from the start. I mean Georgia Tech came out ready they were knocking down threes. Jim Beheim had to call a number of timeouts in that first half just to try to rein some things in.